Hello mate, welcome back. In this video we're going to look at making your content library just look a little bit more sexy. Before I get started, a huge thank you to everyone for subscribing and hitting that notification icon, that really helps me out. And of course an even bigger thank you to my members and patrons, your names will be running across the bottom of the screen at the end of this video. So jumping right into this then. Let's talk about the problem. It's not a problem. Let's be honest, it's just one of those things that I think could be dramatically improved. And what I'm talking about is the icons in the content library or your smart content. Now, as you can see, I've already made a couple of changes here. I've got a logo for this character and I've updated the logo for this character. And I've added custom icons to all of my base files. The base files are basically the files that I use to store any additional things like eyelashes, um, genital, genitals, hair for each character. So as we can see here we've got the mum character but the logo just looks horrendous doesn't it really? <laughs> she's actually quite an attractive character when she's not texture shaded. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to create a new icon for this character so that it falls a little bit more into line with what I would consider to be something attractive. So what I want to do is I'm actually going to just load in the pre-dressed character that I've got here from this subset and then once that's done I will start putting together a little icon render. So we've got the character loaded in and I've already got a camera set up as you can see so I'm going to quickly jump out of that and what we're going to do is we're going to give our character some kind of pose that's going to make her just look we don't you know we want these icons to look nice we don't want them just to be bog standard character standing staring at the camera pointlessly so i'm going to just quickly grab any old pose by function and i'm going to go with standing and then let that have a bit of a think for a minute and let's see what pose we can give it i'm kind of digging maybe this one give that a sec Happy days and now we can jump back into our camera and we want first things first we want this character to be looking straight at the camera so we'll go in there just do a looking at and then point it at the camera and then do the same thing with the right eye as well uh, come on point at camera there we go cool so we can leave her with a kind of deadpan expression there for now what I want to do is quickly simulate the hair because it's a deforce hairstyle and now that we've got that done what we can do now is give it a new HDRI just to change the lighting setup a little bit so I'm just gonna get that out of the way choose a HDRI that I would standard use I think I'm just gonna go with uh, this one and then we can jump into Nvidia iRay preview mode once it's loaded and see how this is going to look. So we'll go in there, give it a few seconds to have a bit of a think about what it's going to do. Okay, so that's what it looks like like this. Now we could go further, but this is only an icon. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to pop this render out and then we will go into Photoshop. So I will see you over there in but a few seconds. So now that we've finished that render, what we need to do is create our file. Now you can create these images, as far as I'm aware, at pretty much any size you want. But in, with the interest of trying to keep the uh, images from getting too high, what I've done is I've just created a 200 by 200 pixel square in Photoshop. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go into my render and I'm actually going to drag it across here into this file. And as you can see, it's not quite the right dimensions so I'm going to increase the size here and I actually want it to crop the top of the head off a little bit because the purpose of this is just to be slightly more attractive than the previous one so there you go as you can see that's in there nicely and I've actually got a little funny logo that I've used in uh, previous thumbnails and stuff that I'm going to put in the corner of there just for the sake of showing that you can make these thumbnails absolutely anything you want in fact if we wanted to we could just create a, a uh, background we can go with this and we can actually drag that across there and there you go we've got a nice looking logo so what we're going to go do is file export export as png and then in the file dialog that appears up afterwards 
we're actually going to select the file that we want to replace. In this case, it's going to be mom.duf.png. Hit save. It's going to say, do you want to replace it? We're going to say yes. And then when we come back into Das Studio, we're going to go into our content library and we're going to have a look and see what's happened. As you can see, currently nothing. We're just going to right click and hit refresh. And then what we'll see is that logo changes. And then if you hover over it, you get the 200 by 200 version of that in there. That's all there is to it, guys. I hope you found that useful. It's really good if you want to create your own products or even if you just want your content library to look a little bit more snazzy and a little bit more organized. Let me know what you think in the comments below and I will see you in the next video. But until then, you take damn good care of yourselves, all right? Bye-bye.